Gaming and Giants. Let's start by taking a look. Yeah, Godfrey tries to cancel that dredge line from Nautilus there with the NATO, which is really hard to time, but just right. As long as he gets a snare off, good damage. And of course, Kalista still has that 12%. Max HP damage right here. We There's see it again. Edge. Gonna get the knock up the flash. Another auto attack. And he First just barely goes down. Oh, that was so close. Nicely done. Because obviously, Runeglaive Ezreal doesn't build here. Traditional Ezreal, oh, yeah. it does. Let's get back Still to that later. Svenskern comes in. Still got two tears. Audrey might be the one crying he is as Candy Panda rends him down. Nice and stolen. Good aggression by SK Gaming. And look where Fox is as well. They don't even have to go to their own jungle. They're catching Frederick. Oh man, he's got to go down way too quickly between Fox and Sven. They are not letting up any pressure in this jungle. Giants are being pushed in in all three lanes, and that is a drafting mistake. You should never let that happen. It's very obvious it will happen. Svenskin goes over the wall. Yep, he's going to get the dredge line out, and Candy Panda's going to get knocked up, but it won't matter. Audrey's already on. Godfred retreats to the safety of the tower, but they can take their time with this four-man dive. Taunt on to Godfred. Not going to last too long. A double kill goes over to Sven Skarin. Smite is usually better than no smite. Shock Blast not going to hit that beat. There's a wall there. And Raiden's going in on him. Do they have him? He gets... Oh, healed up. In comes Freddy to finish it off. Hyperkinetic position, cancellation. And Frederick gets a Shock Blast to the back of the head. SK Gaming, without the Ezreal threat to worry about, can just keep on pushing. There's the Monsoon. Keeps him alive, but still. Could indeed. Dive on the tower, the dredge line connected, but it was on the tower itself. Now tanking it is end rated. Here comes the barrel. Fox is the one knocked to the wall, but Frederick goes in a little bit too deep. He's gonna be taken down before the monsoon can heal him. Fox picks it up, sends a shock blast the way of Pepinero. Going to start the teleport in on it. Here comes Whirlib. They're gonna try to run for this, but it's going very low. The Ren stacks are getting pretty high. You effectively got double smite in this situation. Frederick's gonna come in, try to get the steal off, throws the big barrel. He's able to get it! Frederick, once again, we know he's able to do these, but will Giants pay dearly? Whirlib's going down, Candy Panda picks him up, and they're still going with a double kill for the Ergot to turn it around. Still could be dangerous, a triple kill now. Freddy, Svenskeren, they're going low. Could we see SK wiped off the map? We might just, Pepinero picks up a kill. Pulling some guerrilla warfare here. Hit and run, hit and run. Giants trying for the re-offensive. That is the Runeglaive Ezreal we've been waiting to see. SK are battered and bruised. They have to massively get out, but n rated is caught right between the team. Might be able to do it. Teleport on Freddy. This is going to be at best a 4v5. In comes Fenskaren. He's knocked away, taking a whole lot of damage. The rest of the team are trying to save the day, but Pepinero is going to be able to shut him down. Freddy going low. Audrey as well. Whirlib. Everyone is blinking. True shot barrage barely takes down Freddy and Fox. Oh, so close for Pepinero. If I know anything about Vorpal Blades, they usually are epic rare loot. Let's see what happens here. Sven Skarin comes in. He might be in some trouble, though, as the rest of the team is there. Melting so fast. Knocked by the Monsoon, but Freddy's in the back looking for Pepe Nero. Will he be able to find him? No. Pepe gets away as Audrey takes the kill. Fates call, though, and raided into the rest of the team. Fox picks up Godfrey. Frederick Whirlip going low, but it's Sven and Freddy that are going down. The double kill for Whirlip and Candy Panda's all by his elf. And he's locked down and taken out. An ace for Giants Gaming. But just keep your eyes on Pepe Nero. When the fight seems one for SK Gaming, one proc. One ulti or Q from Pepinero, and then the Ludens just bouncing everywhere on those bunched up SK members is enough to win that fight, and Audrey's still full HP. SK Gaming feels like the timer is ticking down for them right now. If they can secure a dragon, that'd be great, but... Just barely do it. They might pay for this one, though. Audrey and Frederick are actually knocked up, and Audrey, isolated, does get shut down by Freddy. Gave up on him too quickly. Pepinero might have picked up Fox, but Candy Panda gets another. The true shot only clips Freddy. See what they're about to do here as they put a couple wards in the jungle. Gotta be careful. Coin is popped. In comes Frederick, or rather, I just clear. Oh! Goodbye, Jace. Or excuse me, goodbye, Whirlib. I completely juked myself on that one. And Raided is gonna get popped by Pepe, however. So it is a bit of a revenge. Good pickoffs by SK Gaming and sloppy play from Giants. Has to move his way back. Rend. Not nearly enough. Candy Panda Freddy can't fight this one out. Svenskaren might be caught, and he is going to get chunked down, but not quite taken down. The barrel is going to go down on Fox. The rest of SK scattering nice away. Dead. Goodbye, Fox. This time for real. Pepinero picks him up. Zone around the side. SK Gaming is forcing Giants to start is because Freddy is pushing. 
And they still have a steal potential here. Can they take it down? It's going to go over to the Gragas, so no, they won't secure it. Nonetheless, the fight is already on. The Shen is already in, and Frederick still taking the front of it. Freddy actually has to back out. That's not good when your tank goes down, but Giants members are starting to melt. Godfrey not quite down yet. Fox will take down Whirlif. However, Pepinero is going to manage to pick up and raid it as well. And now Audrey takes down Freddy. It's gone all back and forth. Candy Panda so low, but Fox manages to secure himself a triple kill. And Freddy keeping himself in the game. Fox gets engaged on. Oh, Fox. He might pay dearly for his triple. Shut down by Audrey. All said and done. It's a three for four to Giants Gaming Candy Panda. If he can stay alive and powered recall. No, he's interrupted. Frederick takes him down. That's the ace. Minions on the bot. Did he cancel his recall? It almost seemed like Candy Panda canceled his own recall right there. And I feel he would have landed in the base. Let's see Gambit watching this game from the backstage now. It looks like it might be all over if Svenskaren Ten seconds to come up. He's the only one that close to it, but they're doing some serious work on the tower. Super minions in tow. Frederick and Pepinero desperately trying to chip away. Svenskaren only a few seconds up, but the Nexus is already bare Spen's here. Spen's alive. And Raided's up. See if he can save the day. Immediately turns his sights onto Pepinero. He's Still out of matters. In comes in Raided. Tower going low. They're going straight for the Nexus. Pepe, he goes golden. Frederick trying to buy some time. Pepe, he's going down, but the Gragas is on it. Can he finish it up? Frederick. Frederick with the taunt. Frederick just hit oh, it. Oh, he got it. He got it. 43 minutes in. Giants Gaming are victorious. Frederick MVP. They are looking to end that streak in our next. He bases right now. Teleports will be instrumental. I feel neither lane will win 1v1, 2v2. We'll see junglers and teleports. Here we go. In. Embers divide. He manages to get the shuffle off. Betsy on the wrong side. Slow march, and the Sand Soldiers pick it up for first blood. Sharima comes out. Yep. First tower of the game. Rocket side. They had the first dragon of the game, first kill of the game. Uh, he control the game. Might be number two. No, he's going to be able to dash his way to safety and into the arms of his team. Turn some fire. The order is given, and the fight is teleported behind on. two. Teleport in the flank. Betsy realizes he's got to dodge. Steve, is he going to be able to go in? He targets out Diamond Prox under the tower. Betsy now is being fired on, but he's already able to get away. Cabo Shard tries to bait and taunt Steve, but he won't be able to get it. Cabo Shard now in. Gosu Pepper gets pinballed into the team, and Vander gets the kill. A tower to Rocket as well. As he's flanking about, I want to go for a flash engage here. I try it. Dragon's still at half health, though. Diamond Prox waiting in the wings around the side. Teleport, teleport one, teleport two. Might to bail out. In comes the true shot. Starting the fight. Rollins was the target. Goes to Pepper, focused out. Dragon's still in the picture as Yanko's being chased around. Smite it down, and Betsy will pick him off. Meanwhile, the rest of Rocket are scattered to the winds. Might have been Gambit. Setting the dangerous trap, Steve tanking the front line, throws in the sapling. I want to touch on this Maokai again. You talked about it a little bit ago and why, you, you know, you said yesterday why you didn't necessarily like it. I know you had a bit of a Twitter conversation with uh, Kelsey about that one. I guess we'll have to talk in a minute about it since Cabo Shard's being focused out by Steve. In to the fight, flash Steve? for flash, Steve. Can he get in there? Yankos, they just really want to pick this fight. Goes to Pepper, goes for the headbutt, but he'll give himself up. And a tower falls on the bottom courtesy of the minions. Incredibly slow and, and zone control. Diamond Prox here with the piggyback Shen. Oh, the dragon once again. We've seen it before. Triple Rollins. taunt. He is taunted. He is down. Diamond Prox throws the Gatorade at him and secures up the dragon. This is all Gambit right now. Steve, Nuke Duck, Emperor's Divide pushes them all back. But still, Betsy coming up with more. A double kill. And they're going to get the ace. Nicely done for Gambit Gaming. Ace for Gambit. And what seemed to be a very slow fight. But then, honestly, Diamond Prox want to start using it. Shock Blast to keep them off, and they don't need to start this Baron. Not at all. We've already seen what can happen. However, they do have the damage to get Rockat's attention. And Diamond Prox is in the middle. He finds Steve. Twisted Advance back onto Diamond now. Vander, Yankos, Rollis in the back. Goes to Pepper. Make sure they're knocked away from this one. Rollis, they find him, but he's going to be able to Valk his way away, or rather Flash his way away. Steve, Steve, can he stay alive? Steve, Diamond Prox looking for him. Vander still hanging around. Amazingly, no one's down yet, but in comes the Emperor of Sharima, and that's going to be a double kill for him before being taken down. A double kill for the Azir. Shock Blast, another for the Jace. Nuke Duck, can he get away? It's a four for two, but he's going to the wrong base. And Nuke team. Duck playing Summoner's Drift right oh, here. Oh, Jukes. He's now got no flash, though. Oh, 
Pepper finishes the job. She buys into the, the story tale that Gambit's actually staying at the tower. Suddenly, one or two members show up in a different lane. Shen can ulti out and teleport. Uh-oh, Steve, pinball back and forth. The tree, they chop him down. Betsy will get a kill on that one. Vander goes down as well. Double kill for the J7, 1, and 6 on this game. And then such a beefy front line. Lock it to the Iron Solari on Diamond Prox. One of the few that we've seen touched on it earlier. So efficient, and Rockhead just has too little damage right now. Just can't get it done. Steve is going to continue tanking it up, but Gambit don't need to kill him. They just need to keep them busy while the minions come in. True Shot Barrage melts through Nuke Duck's health bar. The rest of the team still trying to finish off the tower. They will be able to take it down, and now only one Nexus turret remains between Gambit Gaming and this game, and the Nexus sitting there Oh boy, this could be the end of it all for Rocket. The Miraculous Defense, can they hold in line? They may be able to, but Rocket Yankos is going down. Steve, he's gonna try to stay alive, flashes back to his base. The last Nexus turret is down. Vander tries to distract, but there's just too much here. And Gambit Gaming will even the head-to-head -head in summer. Slow and steady wins the race. Slow and steady kills the base. Gambit Gaming come out on top, but honestly... Fnatic are going to be taking on the Copenhagen Wolves as they eye their 12th straight victory. Maybe can happen kill. He still has his summoner heal, though. Mooney looking to move down into this red buff with the help of Yellowstar on the rope. Shook realizes a little too late that he was there. That's first blood. And wait a minute, go secure the red buff. Look at the map right now. Rainover is at the bottom. He's helping his AD carry. Copenhagen Wolves completely forget Honestly, fantastic early move by Yellowstar, buying those Moby Boots and making them count. I think you said it. When Fnatic plays a lot of teams, it's like a team playing chess versus checkers, but I think opening Owls might be playing tic-tac-toe right now. However, they look to find Reckless. Assault and Battery is onto him. They look to arrest oh, his momentum, but denied. the last guy Booney's in the picture. 2v3, and they're still taking this fight. Summoner heal spent. Cass is looking to go down, and he does. Huni wants to stake. Well done. Burns up. Let's get back to safety. Reckless is there. Is he going to get closer? The trap is waiting. In comes the cow. In comes everyone else. Reckless. Assault and battery. They will finally take him down. Heavy investment to do it. But even then, there's no objective tied to the kill just yet. Going to commit for this tower. All right, good move by the Wolves. I think this is a good opening. Hiding in plain important. sight. Let's sure. see if can, Fnatic can counter dive in the middle in here. Oh, sure, even shuffle. Feb even knocked in to tower range, but because he didn't attack Soren, he didn't get tower aggro. Chaos Storm on, Rainover around the back, gets the Queen's Bur uh, un Burrow, rather, and the Queen's Wrath on. Gets the kill, nicely done. Why does Bora, or why does Yellowstar get so little recognition? Because he's playing with these star players and he's just supplementing them so well. We One of those star players is caught, though. Maybe a rare mistake from him as they triple team him. Equalizer thrown down. He is going to go down, but not before melting through so much of the health bars. However, I feel that with, with this new these new couple of members in such a sink or swim, do or die matchup as they go in on to Febivin, will he be able to take him down? They pinball him over. The Emperor's Divide may not have even been needed there as Lenny comes in after the fact. They can get a tower. We'll have to see if that's the case as we progress forward. But back into this game. Again, it's it's just coming up on 25 minutes. The lead has been very gradually extending now. Cass is caught on a line. Nice they broke the cheese. He's not going down just yet, but Freeze is going so low. The Chaos Storm now on Cass. It goes right through him. Rainover gets knocked away, but Reckless will stick the spears in and pull him right back out as Soren dashes away. That could have been worse, however, for the Wolves. You know you're in trouble when an enemy team is focusing on Alistar with Unbreakable Will up and kills him. That means you have no counter damage, no counter pressure. Look at Fnatic. Not coming in for the Baron. Let's see, Wolves will fool you once. Let's see if we can fool you twice. And it's even named after them. This is the Fnatic rush, Lenny. You can't fall for that. He's going to be able to almost get away, but Rainover with the flank. Make sure that doesn't happen. Honestly, it's not even falling for him. Ferevan. Oh! A little greedy. Oh, just a bit. Fnatic. Decent at smite steals, but so hard to do it. And Fnatic, they can take it slow. They don't have to rush this Baron down at the end. 
No, they can go ahead and peel for the fight. They found Koss, but Lenny and Shook, they're all coming in. It's a party in the Baron pit now. And who is going home with the prize? It's gonna be rain over. Copenhagen Wolves to their best efforts to save the day, but it doesn't matter in the end. Double kill for the victor. Soren Emperor's divides the rest of them away, but he's still burning low and forced to summon her heel, flashing into the Krugs. They've got full vision of him, and it looks like it's only gonna be a matter of time. Yellow Star's here, the hook not quite connecting. Soren got nowhere to go. That's the ace, that's the Baron, that's Fnatic ringing the bells to try and finish this game off. It's gonna be all about tomorrow, but Cooney's ringing it in quite nicely. And it's already on, however, it looks like Lenny, or rather Rainover, is going down. However, the rest of Fnatic is already here. Lenny is going to have to Shadow Dash over the wall, but Face Call not even needed as Febivin lasers him down. Huge cost to them. Now would be the time to try and keep it alive. And Cass is already down. Febivin lasers him. Shook trying to find Febivin, but Reckless has taken down Soren. Just like that, the damage has gone. A double kill as Shook will now fall. Lenny gets rendered away, and Yellowstar picks up the kill. Hooney just going for the end right now. He knew that was all about to happen. Might want to stat pad just a little bit. But there we go. Last inhibitor turret is falling down, and I don't think anyone expected anything different. But 32 minutes into the game, after the ace, Fnatic take down the Copenhagen Wolves and qualify for playoffs. And Yellow Star, another game, zero deaths. And the second place origin. Let's take a look at the lineups. If he gets in there. That's going to be the trick. Not a lot of initiation. Tabs is going to eat a death sentence. Double play. Tabs responds with a defensive flash. The Lantern is going to pull Niels forward, looking for first blood. Valkyrie defensively. Teleports coming down from Soaz as first blood is secured. The dead butterfly does not blow up the earth. And teleports cancelled from both top laners. Advantage. Especially if Niels and Mitt can keep pressing home their advantage in the 2v2. Very true. I mean, it's kind of funny because poke comps, they like to take dragons early on because of the fact that the stats are great for them, but also they like to get ganged in the mid lane. Well, Pekka is going to throw out that oh, well, they probably don't like it. it did actually connect, and Dexter ate so many tower shots. Reply kill for Froggen. Looked a little scary, but he got the kill. You have a spike on your Corky, you can push that one in very safely and just take down the tower on your own, and then you can start grouping and landing this poke at Dexter has to start pulling off some plays, otherwise Origin can just keep controlling the pace of the, of the game. Tremor sense, Dexter knows Amazing is there, Equalizer is up for Soas, we're going to engage, JWoww is going to throw down the knob, but Amazing Chrono Break dodged it, Equalizer is not Amazing, as Dexter and JWoww are in retreat, Parallel Convergence comes down, that's going to stun Dexter, the burnout is coming down, and Amazing gets the kill, the second one in the game for Origin. Why go haunting, guys, when you can just get flat AP? Mithy's looking for a death sentence. JWoww is getting chunked down. Niels, he feels he's got the damage. Hextrink is gonna pop. Niels is diving. Easy, easy. Third kill, Lemon Squeeze. Yeah, standard uh, swap here from Origin after they got the bot lane tower. Mithy is very aggressive from the start, knowing he could chase the kill down with. Niels, of course, there's gonna be another tower in the top lane for Elements, unless, oh sorry, from Origin. Unless Dex and Frog can do anything to defend it. And to Fisher, we're going to go back to the lack of wave clear on Element's side if they're in trouble. But Froggen should be able to nom nom Niels with the help of Dexter. Emo plagues out. Niels will trade his life for the tower. I agree, and I, I like the fact that Dexter's working his way towards the lockets as well. Against all the bursts that can come down. On the side of Origin, Froggen's gonna eat a death sentence and a chain of corruption. It's Chain City from Origin. Gonna get burned away through the Ignite. Hemoplague's simply not enough, and Mithy's looking for more. Boy, who's comes down. A flash into Piercing Arrow. Peke needs to burn through 250 HP. One more. Auto is enough, and Peke gets another. Origin have full control of the bottom side of the map here. They've already been setting up. Luckily, Rumble it's... and Echo will help them yeah. out just a little bit. A lot. If uh, elements do decide to commit, Dexter's now been caught out. Death Sentence comes in. Nip has got the pulverized down, and that equalizes better. Nip is being burned through that unbreakable will, but he's tanky for days. Death Sentence connects, and that's not going to be enough. We'll get burned down by Soaz. Myth is looking for more. Death Sentence will be up in a moment or two, and Tabs is on the wrong side. Dexter's come in for the knock up, and the Hemo Plague's caught. Another Death Sentence connects. Froggen is down. Dexter, Tabs follow, and Origin find four as well as the inner turrets.
and like him together, obviously like as a as a team together, they're not very good at setting up these fights properly. Maybe he needs to play Varus, Jace, these poke champions instead. But it's not about finding the right engages. Dexter, like, he's going in on amazing though. So four members are caught. Chrono break out, Lantern to safety. So as is teleported in, Dexter's gonna get roasted alive. Now Tabs is the focus. He's peeling away. Nif is in the river with Unbreakable Will and Froggen is simply not in the fight. Peck it burns through him. Tabs now may get caught by the parallel convergence. We've actually changed targets up top. Niels has recalled his, it seems like Dramatic. Tabs and Soaz are picking up kills elsewhere. Mithy, I think, got Soaz out once again. And what looked like amazing getting caught results in three elements dead. It's really all he's got to play with. And as we said, Niels well on his way to the Infinity Edge. Niels' vein yesterday, not particularly impressive, looking a lot more comfortable on Corky. Jay Well, I think he's going down. Gonna get a three man nod, but there's no one from Elements to back him up. And Jay Well teleported in just to get taken out. Now there is a flank being set up, but Elements only have four members. And uh, Froggen and Nip getting jumped. This is not good. Hemo play comes out. Froggen's gonna sanguine pool, but he was rooted for a few seconds. Kill for Mithy. Kill for Peke. And with a 5v2, Origin. Baron buff, ban off command. And I believe you buy an elixir of iron. I was reading this on Reddit. Something like if you buff up that cannon minion, it only needs like a few seconds to almost destroy a tower. I don't remember the exact math on it, but uh, Dexter's trust in me. so much trouble. Equalizer comes out, Chain of Corruption spreads, and they snipe Tabs down. Take a look at Nif in the middle of the team. He's going to be in the next to fall. Death Sentence connects once more from Mithy. I can aimbot this game. Double kill for Niels. Soaz continues to use that Flame Spitter, and Dexter forced to run away. Queen of the Xur side, tail between oh, the a legs. Minion. Boom. <laughs> and Origin break open the base, crack down the inhibitor and set their sights on the Nexus. 15 seconds before Tabs is up with that Baron buffed Siege minion. Clearly the MVP. Baron of command. Origin with a dominant victory over Elements. The unicorns are the love. So let's get straight to oh, the, the lineup. Unicorns moving to Fjarnan. No one's got flash and heal. This is going to be so, so close to Fischio. The hop comes in. Chachi's charging Where's up for Megadol. Lantern? Flame Chompers catches two. Yana's going to flash away. Dodges past the concussive bite. And Kasing, he's even looking forward for more. Summoner spells used. Lulix goes for the flash body slam. First blood to Hyanin. Hillisung's had some target practice. We do see Hillisung and Chachi down in the bottom lane. Marlins is left alone. Otto one there. Doesn't have access to Equalizer yet, but he's picking a fight in this minion wave. Maybe he doesn't want this one. Gonna start overheating. There's Flash available. He's flashed in. Gonna be in trouble now again. No Equalizer. Chachi, he's used Teleport to come down. There is some support from Lulex. Two of those Electro Harpoons connect. Flame Spitter's coming out. Otto one there. He's gonna get hopped on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Rocket. Snipe! Out of nowhere! From way downtown! Basically saying now, okay, I'm gonna be a little bit weaker, but then I'm gonna get faster to my two and three item spike. Lulex is back top lane. Chachi, Chachi my friend. Flash body slam, or rather the body slam flash connects. Electro Harpoon's gonna get flashed away from. The slow from Boomerang should keep him alive. A follow up body slam. Where's Open the shock the blast? Ryu accelerated. Shock blast! the goal. Kasing will be going down in the background though. Death Sentence flashed past as Kikis dives in. Teleport comes up from Odawande. This may be hurting. Hyanin is all throwing down the rockets for the AoE. Switches to Minigun. The Super Mega Death Rocket goes out and connects with Hillisang. It won't be enough for a kill, but Ryu's gonna look for more. He does have that blue buff available. Cooldowns up. Accelerated. Blocked by Hillisang. We'll expand on that in a second. Kasing and Hyanin. This is about to be a part of oh, two face check. v three face check. Isn't going to work out. The AOE is coming out, and that's a dead Kasing. The hop comes out from Chachi. Winter's bite. Is it ready? Flash forward for the auto attack. Lulex will try to save the day, but it won't be enough. The barrel's going to apply a small slow, and two kills for Unicorn Sheepy will be happy with a small comeback. And they maybe rotate to mid lane. Lulix is still staying oh. around. Oops, this might not work out. Kikis is in trouble. The barrel knocks him backwards. Lulex is going to survive. Then Super Mega Death Rocket comes by. Kasing. 
Hex Drinker, Ninja Tabite, but he's got the support. Here comes Kikis and Vardax. We'll quickly look middle as Ryu's in trouble, but he's got the support of Lulex. 2v2, Shockwave catches Lulex, and it's simply not enough. The cast throws Power of Evil against the wall, and Ryu shock blasts for one more. It looks like Hyanan and Kasing got out alive as well. Look at how aggressive HCK were taking the tower down. Death Sentence connects onto Hillisang. The Flame Chompers separates out UOL. First kill secured for Hyanan as he's going to look to run down. Flash away from Vardax to dodge the Super Mega Death Rocket. Equalize is going to burn up Unicorns of Love as Power of Evil Shockwave really didn't do a lot. Odan is still sitting in the mid lane. He's going to join his team very soon. He has no TP yet, but it's very quick for him to move. Shot That's a shockwave. What? Shockwave catches him out and he's down. Vardax gets the kill. H2K in full retreat. Boomerang's going to slow Lulex, but the explosive cast will knock UOL away. Little puppy there, scared of the camera. Cameraman, let him go, man. Let him go. Equalizer onto Power of Evil. He's in trouble. Glacial Fisher comes out to split up the teams. It's Hillisang's Brahm, the manliest of men that's down. And for his life, Unicorns have managed to pick up two. They're trading even thus far. Yarnan's looking for more. Chachi's in Mega Nar. He's eaten a house and a command attack. Kick is unable to sink the fangs down as Ryu gets himself a few. Accelerated shock floss for the snipe. Will it connect? No, because Power of Evil's far enough away. It is the 4th of July tomorrow, and Ryu wants to play some baseball. Unfortunately, it's a mini Nar that he's using to knock around the rift. And now we can see HDK just saying, Dragon, nah, let's go for more. Death Sentence, gonna go wide. Hyanin and Kasing flashed for that one. Zap's gonna miss as well. Come on, HDK, hits a skill shot. Flay doesn't connect. Kasing's gonna give up his life for missing all those skill shots. Oh, one minute now. Turns over to Vardex. Yarnin's got the kill credit. And HDK, a tad over eager. Hammering away on the Nexus turrets. Oh, it's just a small, a, useless minion now. By a, baron, a banner of command. Death Sentence again connects on Hillisang. They're going to flay them back towards the wall. Equalizer burns through Hillisang's brown. Lolix is trying to find another target as Odawam is overheated. Look at how far Vardex got knocked down the lane. He's going to find one. Flash for Lulix. And dramatic pause. I agree, ladies and gentlemen. Just continuing to chase with that barrel. Kasing looking for more. We do see Glulex is now the man that's overextended. But look at the equalizer. Glacial Fish is going to make H2K slow to get into the fight. Hillisung's low. Vardags is low. Death Sentence doesn't connect. And Oduwamne comes out of being golden. Super Mega Death Rocket didn't get a kill. But Power of Evil did. A little earlier. And notice where Power of Evil is putting the ball. He's basically telling Yannick, you can never auto attack this inhibitor because then you're in the range of my shockwave. So Yan has to always dance around it. Now instead, HK is saying, let's go in. Righteous Glory comes out. The box was used from Kasing. The explosive cast was good, and the, the equalizer even better. Shockwave catches Yana, but face of the mountain shield keeps him alive for a few seconds longer. Visit Chachi's got two before he needs to peel away. Hillisang's the only member of Unicorns until that moment to go down as Kickers follows suit. It's now a 3v3. Super minions in the middle lane. Gages. Yana's in eating more damage and giving up more than he should. It's not what we're used to seeing from the, the clean and the calculated H2K. Michelle Fisher comes out. Oduwame is taking a lot of burst, but he wants to get onto Hillisang, and he does. The overheat comes out, and Kikis isn't able to find more. Death Sentence connects onto Kikis, predicting the flash. Oduwame is just going to burn him down. Two kills for UOL. And this time around, Hillisang's positive play backfires. Yeah, they tried to set up a little trap here because Yana was coming from base, but it instead H2K quickly react, get a few kills. Now, two guys down, all members alive. We got super minions. This should be it now for H2K. Big defense needs to happen. Oduwama is teleported in with full HP. Chachi's got Mega Nar. The first Nexus turret is down, and Chachi is going to get chomped by the Flamers on the ground. The Nar is just going to be to buy time as Ryu hammers down for a double kill. The Mega Death Rocket for the third of the fight. The Ace and H2K solidly hold second place.